Man, two videos. Man, you guys are fortunate. And why not another than Stranger Things 2? And I know I did a review about it, but it's a spoiler. guys, Keelan back here, and for this Stranger Things spoiler review, I had to write down a list of the things just so I could remember exactly what was it that I really wanted to get off my chest, on other than I was able, able to say in my regular review about Stranger Things, and for this one, let's start off with the beginning of how the season even started. We started off with a whole heist chase, apparently, which really took, like, caught me off guard out of the whole Stranger Things world. One, different area. Different state, kind of forgot which one it was in, but definitely, <laughs> definitely not a little town that we all know and love. <clears throat> but in the beginning, you see a girl, and in the beginning, you see these people, they're running away from the cops, and then one of them in the passenger seat, she apparently is able to create an illusion that it looked like a bridge broke in front of one of the cops and has caused them to stop, and then allows them to all get away. And then you see her bleed from her nose. And then when you see her wipe it off, you see that the number eight is on her arm. And I was like, no oh, shit. And there's more. And that leads me to the back to my next thing on my list, and that is Eleven's background, where you find out that she has a sister, air quote, sister. Not really her sister, but somebody that she grew up with when she was in a facility and taken away from her mother. And you when you, she meets her mother, yes, she does meet her mother. She meets her mother, and then that's when she finds out that yes she has a sister what her mom been through the words that she her mom just keeps on repeating over and over it's the only things that she can remember from when she went to go try and save eleven in other words jane now and you see that when she was a little girl maybe six or five years old she was um playing with another girl who i don't remember what her name was but um her name was eight i'm just gonna call her eight we meet her and she create illusions and when they saw when they introduced her i was wondering if there's a whole episode about her and i believe it was episode six called the lost sister and guys that was the thing i was saying in my last video that i could see if they made a series out of that called the lost sisters and then it'll be really inter it'll be really entertaining man it'll be really interesting dynamic because if you know eight's alive who's to say that the other numbers like you know they aren't alive because if that was a tv show you get these is like called the lost sisters or something like that and it's like you know you have eight and eleven i'm just saying like different characters or something but you know they're trying to find they're trying to because she was saying in the season that oh daddy's papa's not dead and i mean all i'm pretty sure he is dead i mean we saw him get killed in the first season if he ain't dead that's that's complete bullshit i don't think she thinks he's dead but only because she wasn't there and i know that the guy that there was a guy that they killed who was there that, that um, messed up Eleven's mom. He said that he's alive, but I just think he didn't know that the guy died. It was like a couple months or like a year, I believe. But then you meet the other number, like the other kids eventually. I just want to know who's number one and who's 10. That's what I'm really curious about. That she has my attention the most. And now on to Will. You get more of Will in this season, all in all, but it's, you still, but he's still going through what he did at the end of the first season where you saw that he threw up a slug. I mean, this season he's not throwing up no slugs, but it did flash him to the upside down, and he's going through that, and it's getting worse and worse as time goes on. He's going there more. He's going there more. He's there a little longer, and this time there's that tentacle creature thing that is, uh, we see chasing is chasing after him now, and they called it the Mind Flare. Really good name, and as it, it chases after him. And he tries his best to avoid it. I think it's insane. It's just trying. It tries to it eventually takes over his body. And there's this new guy in there named Bob Newby. And the reason that it takes over Will's body is because uh, his mom's new boyfriend, Bob Newby. Uh, I love that guy. Um, 
he told him because he sees he sees it as just Will's dream, as just like Will's just going through a dream. So you know he's trying to help, but it's one of those things where somebody's really trying to help you, but that help really it, it doesn't help. I'm gonna contradictory, but um no I it's, that's ironic, but um uh it's crazy because the mind flare takes over his body now, and then you you see it it's starting like to affect him even when he tries to fight it. And then at a point, um, things just get even more hectic with the mind flare. And honestly, the kid that plays Will, man, he really ha he really shows that he knows how to act. He this kid is putting in the works in this season, my word. And then you get we get two new characters, Matt and Billy. Uh, the character that plays Billy is Zachary Montgomery. If you don't remember him, he was in Power Rangers. Really great in this. Um, man, I sometimes I, I really forget that this guy has a British accent. Man, he's good at his American accent. And there's a scene in there where, um, because he seems like he's abusive towards Mass, and but it comes the source of that comes because his dad's abusive towards him, and it really threw me off that that was like that. But um, you get him and Mass, and he it's weird how he feels towards Mass because he's overprotective of her at the same time. It's just like he's coming off a little too strong at points, like where she was well Lucas. And he doesn't like that. I mean, I was kind of seeing like, is he racist or something? Because it was like Lucy specifically that he wasn't liking the fact that she was around. Even when he went to Will's house and he saw that all the other boys were there, including Steve, he grabbed Lucas out of all of them. And I'm just like, wow, dude, like, what the hell did Lucas, like, Lucas is literally just standing, you know, speaking of Steve and the kids, this brings me to Nancy and Steve. And yes, they end up breaking up. You kind of get a sense of that in the trailer. And I'm alright that they broke up, cause you know, all, all in all, I'm sure all of us want her, all of us want to be with, all of us want Nancy to be with Jonathan. But I love Steve. Steve is awesome. He's my favorite character in the show, and I feel like he's had the best character development through the show from the first season to now. And I'm glad they break up. And you know, Steve's really adult about it. He accepts it. He's saying oh, it's okay, Nancy. And, you know, I may be a crappy boyfriend, but I'm a, I'm a hell of a babysitter, and he is. He really is. I'm telling you, it's going to be on the shirt. And, man, Steve really does great in the season, man. When he comes to that bat, like I said before, you can't stop Steve with that bat. There's a scene where they're trying to get the Demigorgon, or, correction, the Demodog, that, oh boy, Dustin freaking takes, he finds it, and um, he calls it Art, Art, Artagian, or something like that, but it's short for Art. Oh, short for Dartagian, short for Dart. And he keeps it, and then at first you think there's just one. And then you see when Steve tries to use himself as bait, there's more than one. I saw there was, and then there's a second one that comes. I was like, oh shit, there's two. And then more comes, like, oh shit, there's more. Damn. And then for at that moment I really thought Steve was gonna die. I really thought he was gonna die. It's gonna hurt me so much if he did. But then dude Steve steals the show once more. He hauls ass to back to the bus. He jumps over a car, dodge that one um demon doll that tried to attack him. That thing flies in a car, he turns around, swings the bat at another one. My word man, what a great scene. My favorite probably my maybe my favorite or my second favorite scene. My word, man, that was amazing. I loved it. And um, speaking of uh, uh, now to Nancy and Jonathan, I really liked what they were doing with their relationship. Um, they really, I'm glad they uh brought up the fact that you know Nancy got back with Steve, and apparently she waited a month for Jonathan. And you know Jonathan, he that's why he kind of like pushed himself away from Nancy after that whole time uh, passed. Um, cause. He just felt like, you know, you only waited for me for a month, but in her defense, you know, hey man, I get, you know, you're trying to help Will, your brother and stuff, but a month, I feel like she did give you your due. Steve's there, He's he wants to be with her, you know, he is there for her. And I don't think y'all know he was a crappy boyfriend, it's just that, you know, Nancy liked Steve, but she didn't love him like she did Jonathan, and it was even pointed out by one guy who's a conspiracy theorist, um, saying that, hey, you know, you guys have a share, you guys shared um, a traumatic moment together you know that's that's something that could really bind two people together which i can't do with others it, and it makes sense steve is that um i like what they do with steve and dustin's relationship 
Cause that's another thing. They really um had some people together that we really wasn't expecting to, you know, really have um good chemistry. And it was uh, Steve and Dustin, and Steve like he was taking Dustin under his wing, which is another reason why I thought Steve might have died or was gonna die when they were, they were under the tunnel and they were trying to escape, and then all the kids were getting out. And it was just Steve and Dustin, and Steve was, I thought he was going to try and get Dustin out, then he was going to try to stay there and fight all the rest of the Dylan dogs that were coming. Surprisingly, that didn't happen, and I'm glad it did, only because I'm glad Steve's alive. And then um, all the Dylan dogs ran off and went back to the facility. And, oh man, I really think Steve and Dustin, I really want to see how well they work together more in their third season. And then Steve was even telling Dustin, you know, how he makes his hair like the way he does. And Dustin took that advice and took it to the prom, and we'll get the prom later. And speaking of uh, good chemistry, uh, Mike and Will's chemistry is really, um, really interesting. It's really um, entertaining, actually, because in the first season, I felt that Mike was the closest to Will out of all of them, because even when Will was died, you know, I felt like he took it the hardest. And then even and then we found out that Will might be alive. He really wanted to believe that Will was alive. I felt like that was his best friend. And then you find out more about their friendship, how long they knew each other. For a very long time when they were really, really young, so uh, I feel like they're really the best, best of friends when it comes to one another. And you see Mike with Will the most, actually. That's the most time you do see Mike. When it, every time you see Mike, you mainly see him with Will. So, and it really just makes their friendship grow more and more. And then there's a moment where Will's tied up, and everybody has to. His mom, Jonathan, and Will. I mean, his mom, Jonathan, and Mike, are just refreshing his memory and just like going over like their past and all the good moments they had together and I mean I understand that the other kids are um, translating the Morse code that he was using in order to trick the Mind Flayer but still and the Mind Flayer man the Mind Flayer is a pain in the ass god damn he's a pain in the ass Jesus hate him he was so annoying I just hated how he was just in his kids body he's just trying to yeah he's just pain just pisses me off, man. He just pisses me off. He doesn't talk or anything. He's just there. I just hate him. Just hate that. I just hate a creature that just tries to take over your body. Oh, my God. I just... Great, interesting antagonist. I think we're definitely going to see him in the third season because, hey, this is a spoiler review. If you're watching it, then, hey, you're shot up. I mean, if you haven't watched the season, then you must like being spoiled. But, yeah, we're going to see him because you see him at the end of the prom trick you see him at the end of um not even prom it's it's just a dance and in the upside down um i mean it's not like they show that they really defeat him or anything they destroy all the demigorgons and they close the gate which i'll get to that too but um and he did fly out of will's body once uh his mom overheated like the room man it must have been hot as hell we live in my i live in miami boy it gets hot here, but man, they were sweating like... I don't understand what it feels like to be sweating your goddamn ass off. Jesus Christ. They must have been boiling hot. And more down the line with the chemistry between two characters. Man, I loved it between Eleven and Hopper. Because it, it was just... It was really good, man. I could see a whole thing with just the two of them. Um, I loved it between them. It's just like, you know, that's like his daughter. And, you know, he lost his daughter. She never had a really a, fa a father... And that's pretty much her father. I love the fact that now her name is gonna be Jane Hopper, and I, uh, the dynamic between them um, is just especially when he tried he tried to ground her and just her reaction to it. It was just amazing. I loved it so much, and you know you really do understand where both are coming from. At the same time, I love the scene where you finally where she finally gets to meet the group, and then like they go to like to like each other. Oh, where were you? All mad and like, and then they still hug. I loved it, and then when they were driving to go to the facility to close the gate, and then you know he talked to her about it, about like you know because she was gone for a while. That's when the whole lost sister episode happened. And, you know he apologizes. He says I'm sorry. You know I messed up. And, you know she says the same thing, and um you know she gets a new hairstyle and all. She yeah she grows her hair out. I I, I think the curly hair more than the when she had it slicked back. I mean yeah it's bitching, but I mean <laughs> I don't know. It's just, it's just really cute, man. It's really cute. I, I kind of do want to watch that season all over again, but, man, it was, it was really good. Um, oh, yeah, let me... I have to talk about this guy. If I don't talk about him, it's, like, it's messed up. Bob Newby, superhero. You gotta love Bob. Man, I wasn't, I wasn't really doing how I felt about him, but, man, Bob is so funny. He's just a... 
he's just a kooky guy, man. But you know, he tries hard. He tries hard, and I, as much as I try not to like him, he made it difficult more and more every time. Dude came in and I forgot who they said. Maybe like Billy Idol. He's like, I love that guy. And then he saw like a movie, like, oh wow, sweet. Oh my god, man, this guy kills me. Jesus Christ. And I'm telling you, as soon as I heard him say Bob Newby superhero, dude, I'm like, that's gonna be a shirt. I will buy that shirt. Now, if his face is on, I'm not gonna buy it. But if it just says it, I'm buying that shirt. You can be damn sure I'm buying that shirt. Trust me. Man, dude, I, I forgot the actor's name. Man, he is a good actor. I haven't seen him in he made things since Rudy, but man, that guy's a good actor. He's, he's uh, well, way to bring back Stranger Things, the show to bring back your career. But geez, man, I, I like the fact that he grew up with, uh, I guess, uh, Joyce and um, Hopper, because just how much they're familiar with one another. I, I like it. It's, it really makes me do want to see some of you know that, like back to see that past, how that was. Just a, it's a little interesting thing in my opinion, and um. Yeah, he does die, man. It's sad. I mean, I knew he was going to die just when they were on him a little too long. He was running away from the demo dogs. I remember him from the trailer. It's like, damn. At first, I thought he could survive, but as soon as I saw that demo dog chew on his damn face, I'm like, shit, he's dead. Oh, yeah, and uh, the other uh, series idea I have for this that they could um, that I could see as a whole different show, Steve and Billy's dynamic. I really like I really like theirs. I hope they do more with Billy. I really do want to see more Dakery Montgomery. Um, in a sense cause uh, you know, after um basically there's a moment where Matt stands up to Billy, you know, as she um, gives him a syringe of I think uh, a tranquilizer, I think. And, you know, she told him, you know, to fuck off basically and you know, he's hallucinating stuff. I like that about Billy, even when he hallucinated he was just like, yeah, yeah, whatever, I understand. He, like, he was so calm about it. So, I mean, I don't want to be much of an asshole too, Matt. So it was really hard for me not to like him. I, I can't lie. I mean, he's not bad as a bully and um, it. So, I didn't really hate him like that. But, um, between him and Steve, I really like, I like their dynamic maybe because it's like he was kind of an asshole towards Steve. Because, you know, he's saying people used to call Steve King Steve. I don't remember that. But, um... I liked it because the fact that, you know, he's kind of an asshole, but he'll give him some good pointers. Like, when they were playing basketball, like, you know, he was telling me, hey, man, you know, plant your feet and all that, you know, don't let your guard down. Well, plant your, plant your feet, keep your guard up. And then, you know, and then even with Steve's old friend, the douchebag from the first season, the bitch of a girlfriend, uh, he was talking all that shit about Nancy and Jonathan, like, leaving. He's like, oh, man, you didn't know. And then, you know, Billy was just like, you know, dude, it was like, whatever, man, don't let it sweat you or anything like that. I mean, there's plenty, in his words, bitches in the sea. And, um, I mean, I get it, you know, he's kind of saying like an asshole, but it's, it's, he, has a, he has a point. There's other girls out there, man. But it, should be, it shouldn't be hard for Steve. He's a good-looking guy. I mean, it's the way he said it. I guess it could make some sense more like an asshole, but, you know, you can see that's kind of a good advice. And, um, I don't know, man. It just seems like there's, like... He's really calm when he's with, I don't know, he's a calm dude, he's really chill when he's with Steve. I can really see them chilling or something like that. I want to see more of them. I want to see more of Billy overall, but I want to see more between their relationship. I mean, come on. Oh, in the end, Billy still doesn't know about all this shit that's going on. He really doesn't know. He still doesn't know anything. That fight between him and Steve, man, I like that fight. That was actually a really good fight. I feel like Steve got some good hits on him. I'm glad Steve avoided his hit. Because Steve better avoid some, knows how to avoid a hit. Because dude, like, dodge a Demi Gorgon for fuck's sakes. That's a monster. Pretty sure monsters are better reflexes than fucking humans. Come on, guys. Let me really. But then there's a long video. Um, the last thing I really wanted to say was about Eleven or Jane closing the portal or the gate to be exact. Man, that was really crazy, dude. Like that was on some goddamn Jean Grey Phoenix type of crap right there, man. Wow. When I saw her bleed from both nose, I'm like, man, you're going to start bleeding from your eyes probably too, man. Jesus Christ. Do not kill this girl off again. She put in so much work into closing that damn gate. She had to think of all... Because her sister in the Lost Sisters episode told her, you know, use the anger and, like, use the anger in you. Everything that makes you mad, use that to, like, control the, like, the bigger objects to move. And that just reminded me of S-Men First Class about, you know, <clears throat> uh, 
find a balance between anger and tranquility or whatever Professor Jay said in Magneto. That's honestly what it reminded me of. It reminded me of that scene of him just trying to move that big ship. It's so it's funny looking back at it, but it's it's not it's not trying to be funny about it. I'm not trying to be funny about it. It's just that that's what it makes me think of. And she, you know she's levitating. Then I was like, oh shit. Dude, call, yo, somebody call Professor Xavier, man. What time period, what was this, the 80s? Yeah, man, dude, Professor Xavier is just in that time. Come on, dude, get that guy, call him up a little bit. Or he, I can see they show Professor Xavier and he was like, oh, I feel a new mutant. Oh my God, that would be a fucking funny, man. That would be amazing. Jesus Christ, the newest member of the S-Men. Call her 11. Yeah, your name, real name is Jane Hopper, but, you know, S-Men name right there. She has an Esmin name right there, Eleven. What the hell? Oh my word, man. This is be great. Sorry for geeking out, guys. Um, yeah, that's really all I have to say. Is a spoiler review, you know. Um, hey, how you guys thought of the show? Um, did you like? Did you like? Like I said before, did you like it more than the first season? Did you like it? Less than the first season. Was this your first favorite season? What do you think of the second season overall? And what do you think will happen in the third season? What do you think of all the things that did occur and what I talked about? And is there anything that you felt that you wanted me to mention or what you felt that I forgot to mention? And just comment below. And is there any shows, movies, animes, or comics or anything else you want me to talk about? I mean, always comment below. And as always, don't fail to ring that bell. Like if you dare, subscribe if you care. Keon for Miles. Star, I'm burning out fast. I try to shine, but it's never gonna last.